Hey y'all, welcome back to the Hack Shack. Today we've got another box from the folks at Hacker Boxes. This is Hacker Box 11, and the name is Relay. Let's get this on the bench and see what we have inside here. This looks like the ESP Room 32 development board. A bunch of goodies in this bag. Let's see what we have here. This looks like our exclusive LoRa C3 OLED PCB, as well as our exclusive LoRa IO PCB. Here we've got our two 915 megahertz antennas. This looks like our two RA01SH LoRa modules. Here we've got two female SMA edge launch connectors as well as some terminal blocks. Here we've got the ESP32 C3 board with the 0.42 inch display. And this looks like a pretty neat little paracord keychain. This is the 16 element RGB LED ring. Here we've got our exclusive triple sticker sheet. Looks like some pretty cool stickers this time. And last but not least, we've got our HackerBox 111 collectible reference card with the ESP32 C3 OLED pinouts on this side. And on the back side, we've got a nice picture of the LoRa IO board fully put together. Before we move on, I'd like to take a moment to thank today's sponsor, PCBWay. Bringing your PCB designs to life? PCBWay makes it easy. Select your options, just upload your files, and place your order. Fast, high-quality PCBs for hobbyists and pros alike. And now's the perfect time to get creative. PCBWay's 11th badge design contest is on, celebrating 11 years of innovation. Design a PCB badge featuring PCBWay and 11 for a chance to win cash, coupons, and free prototyping. Submissions are open until April 30th, 2025. Check the link in the description for details and enter today. We thank PCBWay for sponsoring this video. Just like they always do, the folks from Hacker Boxes have included a great set of instructions here available on Instructables. I have a link to that in the description. Even if you don't have the Hacker Box, you might find it pretty handy. Okay, the first thing the Instructable tells us to do is plug a USB-C cable up to our ESP32 C3 board, and we should see the display say HW675, and the blue and red LED are on, and that looks as expected. Okay, next, assuming you have the Arduino IDE installed, if not, you can go install that. It's pretty straightforward. In the Arduino IDE, we're going to search for ESP32, specifically Espressive Systems, in the board manager. Not this top one, but look, the one below here is what we're looking for. And I've already got that installed. If I didn't, I would click on the install button, and it would install that. Okay, and now we want to go to Tools, Board, ESP32, and select ESP32 C3 Dev Module. Then you want to go to Tools, Port, and pick the port that activated when you plug this particular board in. That's the one you want to select. Then you want to open the Sketch, File, Examples, Basic, Blink. And then at the very top of that file, we're going to stick in this Define LED built-in ape, and we're going to push it to the board. If everything's working as expected, we should see the blue LED blinking. Next, we're told to install this U8G2 library from the Arduino Library Manager. See, I searched for it and I actually already have it installed here. And if I didn't, the remove button would look like an install button. Then we're instructed to grab this simple OLED demo sketch and compile and push that to the ESP32C3. And if we see our message here on the display like this, that means that worked okay and our library is good to go. Now we're instructed to assemble the LoRa C3 OLED kit. We're gonna get these LoRa modules loose here. And I'm gonna make sure that's in the right orientation first. And you'll see I'm gonna load up this one corner pad with a little solder and start soldering here. And real quick, this is soldering instead of through hole, kind of just using the castellation type connection here. And there's a good reference to this SparkFun video that tells you all about how to do this the best way. And I'll put a link to that in the description. And with that done and looking good, it's time to solder the female SMA edge launch connector. And if you notice, one side of the board in that area has three pads and one side has two. You want to make sure that the side that has the metal pin matches up with the side that has the three pads. It kind of straddles the edge of the board. With these larger metal pieces, I like to add a little flux to help the soldering go a little more smoothly. Okay, 
Next, it's time to solder on the ESP32 C3 board with the supplied header pins. You'll see I get those in there and get everything ready and lined up, and then I totally forgot to hit record while I was soldering these pins. Sorry about that. But here's a quick look at the end result of that missing footage. The Instructable then has us connect the power back up to the board to make sure that it's still working as it was before we did the soldering. Next, the Instructable advises us to choose one of two ways to connect up our LED ring. The A way, which gives you a pigtail that you can have a quick disconnect, but a little more bulky cable. Or the B way, where you have a shorter length of cable potentially and go direct to the board, but you don't have a way to do a quick disconnect. But that's probably better for some kind of permanent install. I went with A, so you'll see here where I cut the pigtail off the output side, DO, and then I use that to connect to the board here. You'll see I pre-fill these pads with some solder, then add a little solder to the wires that I previously stripped, and just attach those like this. Next, the Instructable tells us to grab this Web NeoPixel C3 sketch. So I download that and open that up. And then it tells us to go over and get this webpage.h header file. So I grab that, kind of unzip it, and stick it into the same folder that was automatically created when I opened up this NeoPixel sketch. Then I'm going to search and make sure I have these three libraries, the U8G2 that we just got earlier, and the Adafruit NeoPixel, which I actually also have from earlier. And then we're going to install this ESP Async Web SRV. And I want you to pay special attention to the spelling as it was in the Instructable because that is not what I installed here at first. If you notice, these are different. So it pays to pay attention to details. And I won't show you all the trouble I had. I'll just spare you that. But once I figured out what I'd done wrong, I uninstalled that one and I installed the correct one, as you can see here. Then I made sure I edited the file as it specified here with my Wi-Fi credentials. And then I pushed it to the device. And you'll see here, it looked like the code was running on the device and see how it's doing this blinking deal, it was doing that? I thought maybe it was supposed to be doing that, but if you look at the serial console, which I don't have here to show you, you can see that it was just rebooting over and over again, which is not what you want to do. And I couldn't connect to the IP it was getting because it was just steadily restarting. I checked out the comments that go along with the Instructable and noticed that I was not alone with this behavior. And if you look down here, folks said to get this to work, to back down your ESP32 package to version 3.07. I didn't really dig into more of the why or what. I just decided to give that a try. And you'll see right here, I backed it down. And then I pushed the code to it and it seemed to be looking much better. There was no more of that blinking. At this point, I realized I totally missed a solder point here. So I disconnected the power and fixed that. Then I powered it back up and connected the RGB LED ring. And now I can connect to it in my browser and you get this cool interface where you can play around with the colors and it'll change the RGB ring. That's pretty cool. Next, the Instructable tells us to grab our ESP Room 32 dev board and plug it up just as a basic health check. And we are expecting to see a solid red light and we do see that, so that's good. Following along with the Instructable, I assume at this point, if you've made it this far, you've already installed the Arduino IDE. And we are gonna make sure that we've got the ESP32 package installed, which we do, because we've already used that previously in this box. And we're gonna make sure that we go to board ESP32 ESP32 dev module this time. We're going to make sure we've got the right COM port that was detected when this particular board was plugged in. And then we're going to go open up the file example basics blink sketch. And at the top, we're going to insert this small thing to tell it the built in LED is number two. And we're going to push that code to the board. And we should see the blue LED blinking if that's all working as expected. Okay, the next thing you're going to see me knock out is putting this LoRa IO kit board together. I'm going to start out with the LoRa module. Then I'm gonna do the edge connector, very similar to the way I did it on the previous board. And 
and then I'm going to put the actual ESP32 module on there. Then I'm going to put these blocks on here and make sure you notice how I'm putting the large hole here. This is the port that a wire would go in. That's going to face the outside edge of the board. The Instructable advises us to plug things back up and see if the blink sketch is still running just to make sure we didn't mess up the ESP32 in the process of soldering things up. All right, next the Instructable has us get this LoRa RA01S library and I'm gonna grab that and put it in the folder where all my other Arduino libraries are for my bench PC install here. And I'm gonna comment line 23 out as it says to do so here. And then we've got the two sketches here and I'm going to push each one to their respective board. And when both of those are done, we should get a basic LoRa communications test here. If you're a regular viewer of the HackerBox videos I make here, you'll know that as far as timing goes, I am a bit behind. So I was trying to think of something I could do kind of quick and easy to show some other kind of semi-useful idea of a way to use this stuff. And I was trying to roam around and see if I could find a temperature humidity sensor, because I know I have one around here somewhere, something like this, but I could not find it. But I was able to easily lay my hands on one of these passive infrared sensors, similar to what might be in a bathroom or something to save electricity or for like a security light, that kind of thing. The general idea being seeing if I could do like a benchtop proof of concept showing how a remote PIR sensor could trigger something over LoRa to another unit. Since I'm behind in trying to catch up, I thought I would try out the co-pilot feature of GitHub just to see what it would do to try to help me make this next little demo with this PIR sensor. So this isn't the exact first thing I did, but this is essentially what I did, what you'll see on the screen here. I basically asked it what I was trying to do and gave it the two example pieces of code from the hacker box and it spit back some code here. After seeing the first code that it produced, I took a quick second and set up the PR sensor on a breadboard and connected that up to the IO board here from the kit. Now the first code that it sent, it got the IO wrong for the um, LED. So you'll see when I first powdered up the LEDs like lighten up and it's not working but then it fixed it and I pushed that code to it and let's see if it works. What you should see here is when I wave my hand over the PIR sensor on the remote unit that the local unit, air quotes, uh, flashes its LED a few times and then it resets. I stuck this code up on my GitHub if you want to check it out. This is the code that was produced from Copilot. I didn't do anything else to it. It is as it is. It just modified code from the hacker box. So I just want to make sure I'm clear. I think that this can be a cool tool to help you do some things. I'm not saying let this do your job for you. And please don't put anything that's secure in there. Don't uh, share any scripts or any kind of data that's real that could have any kind of security implications. Please, you know, don't do that. I'm not sure what I expected to happen when I asked it to do this, but very surprised, but I guess it shouldn't be surprising. I assume it's training on any kind of public stuff it can get a hold of. You just hope that it's uh, gonna maybe get the better coding habits and not the bad ones, right? I would think it's uh, safe to think anything that this produced, try to get it audited maybe by somebody other than yourself if you're not that great of a coder. I mean, I definitely would file myself under that. Still a fun thing to play with. As we get closer to the end of the instructable here, you can see a cool section talking all about knots, and that's very cool. And it does talk about maybe using the paracord keychain for that, but I think I'm gonna have to leave mine as is, as it's already been claimed by my oldest kid. Now I am a big fan of the bowling knot. It can come in handy a lot of the times.
and I also think the clove hitch knot is pretty cool too. I'm looking forward to checking out some of these resources in the Instructable about different knots and stuff, especially these knots you can wear because I feel pretty lame. I can only do a four in hand tie. I can't even do a proper half Windsor and I need to fix that. And it would also be cool to know how to do a bow tie. It looks like we're gonna have ourselves another giveaway. The nice folks at Hacker Boxes have graciously offered to send a Hacker Box 111 to a randomly picked commenter. We'll be picking the comment on March 28th, 2025. And remember, Hacker Boxes only ships to US addresses for this giveaway. So if your comment's picked, but you don't have a US shipping address that we can use, we'll need to pick someone else. Good luck. At the time of this recording, there are still Hackerbox 111s in stock. If you don't win the giveaway and want to get one, check them out. Or go ahead and subscribe. Hey, if you made it this far, thanks for watching. Hope to see you again next time. Take care. Bye-bye.